But back to uh, we said Shh. oh cheesecake and schwarz with the bracha chreina. You you get an extra um, or an extra bracha chreina. Yeah, extra piece of cheesecake. The okay. question yesterday we discussed. Okay, we learned about primary, secondary. Okay, so we said that if you're only eating the secondary because of the primary, you don't make a bracha on the secondary. If you're eating it for both, then you make a bracha on both. Okay, now what happens if everything's equal, like you're eating a fruit salad, and there's ha'ait and ha'adama and all these things together? So, now Trevor holds like those poskim that say, you go by the majority of what the food is. If it's majority ha'adama, it's ha'adama. Majority ha'ait, it's ha'ait. And if it's equal, exactly 50 50, you make two brachas one on the eight, one on the adama. The last thing you told us what we like, brother. No. It's not what you like? No. Not the majority? Not when there's two things equal, you like it all, and you're eating a fruit salad. Oh, if you like it all. But But that's what we're talking about now. (laughs) We're not talking about what we're not talking about. We're talking about what we're talking about. Anyway. So then we're also discussing where he left, about the ice cream, no? So if the cone is tasteless, so then you don't make a bracha on the cone because there's no taste to it, it's only told the ice cream. By the way, I mentioned in the past, there's a very interesting story about the origin of ice cream cones, by the way. It was in England, there was a guy that sold ice cream in cups. And there was a guy next door to him that had a waffle store. And one time the guy serving the ice cream ran out of the cups. And he had to, people were in the store, he needed to, to, to give him ice cream. So he realized, he was smart, he went next door and ordered waffles, and he put the ice cream into the waffles, and that became the origin of ice cream cones. This is what I once, not in yeshiva, I didn't learn this in yeshiva. <laughs> I learned this, I read this somewhere, that that's the origin of ice cream cones. So again, if the ice cream cone has a taste to it, so then, even though the ice cream is the eker, but because it's mezainus, really mezainus would be the primary thing. But we said you can make a bracha first on the ice cream, and then make a bracha mezainus on the cone. If you made a bracha on the mezainus on the cone first, then you cannot make a bracha on the ice cream, because again, you made a bracha on the primary thing, which is always mezainus, and then. Now, what happens if you have cheesecake, okay? Let's discuss the seasonal uh, main attraction. So now you have cheesecake. Cheesecake has a thin crust, and then you have, let's say, okay, so let's say you have a half an inch crust and four inches cheesecake, cheese. I mean, the, the cake, whatever is in it. And there might be fruit on the top also, like strawberries or blueberries. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Those are not as good as the plain no, cheesecake. No, I know, it's still not as good as the plain cheesecake. So we're going to discuss the better one, plain cheesecake. <laughs> now, what you have is like this. So you have... So what bracha is the, what bracha do you make on it? So you make a mezainus, because the crust is not only there to hold the cheese, it's there for taste also. So therefore you make mezainus and cheesecake. But now the question is, when it comes to an after bracha. Now the din is, you need to eat a kezayis, which is an ounce of cake. And you eat, need to eat an ounce of cake, like we said, within within four to seven minutes. So now the question is like this. Now that I have a slice, a piece of cheesecake, okay? I have a piece of cheesecake. Altogether, there's a kezayis. But in the crust, there's no kezayis within the amount of pras. The percentage of cake is very, very minimal. So now the question is, what do I do with an after bracha? Because yes, I made a mezainus on the cheesecake, but now I don't have, that's because the, the, cake, the crust was the primary. But I still, in order to make an after bracha, I need a, a, a kezayis of the primary, of the, of the cake, of the crust. So many opinions in Allah say, you need to eat a kezayis of the crust within the six minutes. Other opinions say, and this is what most people do, by the way, even though the Rebbe says it's better to make sure you have enough 
that you had enough of the crust also. But many people say that because the cheesecake now became a zainus, it's all counted in the afterbrach of a kazayas of cheesecake, including the cheese, would be enough to make an afterbrach. That's basically what most people do in the world today. So they make an, uh, an afterbrach like that. But then you have that in, in all aspects. You can have um, a minimal amount of mezainus, so the first brach would be mezainus, but the, you don't have enough for, for a shear. Right? So, so then, oh, I'll give you another example, well, which really doesn't apply. I mean, it's not connected really to this, but I don't know why it came into my head now. You hear Kiddush and Shul Shabbos. Okay, somebody makes Kiddush, you answer Amen, you drink the wine. Now, we learned already before there's a din that wine covers the first bracha and the after bracha. Meaning, if I drink a cup of wine, more than three ounces of wine, and I'm drinking juice and soda and all drinks, not any food, so I just make a break on the wine. I don't make any brach on the liquid. Okay? Not before and not after. Meaning if I have enough wine to make an after bracha, so then I don't make an after bracha on the juice because I make an after bracha on wine covers the juice. What happens though if I have from Kiddush a drop of Kiddush? Not, not enough to make an after bracha. And then I went and I drank a cup of soda or juice or water or whatever. Now, the din is, because I heard Bari Piyah Goffin from the person that made Kiddush, and I answer Amen, it's like I said the Bari Piyah Goffin myself. Therefore, when I'm going to drink a cup of soda, I don't make a shahakul on the soda, because it was covered by the Bari Piyah Goffin of the wine. The problem is, now I'm going to drink a whole cup of soda, but I didn't drink any, enough wine to make an afterbrach. So then what's the aloch? The aloch is then you make a burn of on the soda. Because that you have, so in other words, you have a scenario, you didn't make an original bracha, you didn't make shahako because it was covered by a different bracha called Bari Priyagofen, but I have to make an afterbrach on the juice and soda because I didn't drink enough wine to cover the afterbracha. For an after bracha, three ounces. Three ounces. Three ounces is the amount of liquid for an after bracha. After bracha for food is one ounce. One ounce is what enough food that, that you need to make an after bracha. And if you have less than an ounce, then you don't make an after bracha. No, I'm saying let's say you have a challah and you would starve with other things. Challah, you have less than an ounce. You wash, you made a moitzi, and you had less than an ounce, but you lay, but you had other food. So the question is, the point is, you became satisfied. So then, that's an exceptional case, by the way, that if somebody, you go to a banquet, or a wedding, or a shalosh shudas for that matter, but by the way, we learned like this. When you wash and you make al natilas yadayim, in order to make the bracha al natilas yadayim, you need to eat two ounces of bread, or challah, or matzah. Not one ounce, two ounces. That's in order to make the bracha al natil asidayim. Therefore, if I know I'm going to only have one slice of bread, which is one ounce, not two, I have to wash for bread, but I don't make the bracha al natil asidayim. I just wash my hands without a bracha. Now I need to bench on the kazayis. So I need to eat a kazayis of bread. What, one minute, one minute. What happens if I ate a half a kazayas of bread, right. but I ate a bunch of other foods, i.e., not stam desserts, if I ate fish, meat, chicken, eggs, things like that, and I became full, yeah. even though it's not the best thing to do, but you still have to bench. Lechatchila, lechatchila, you, that's not what the right thing to do. Lechatchila, you eat a kazayas of bread. No, well, I'm saying for benching. For Al Natil Sidaim, you need to eat two Kazaisim, which is a Kazaisim. Yeah. Um, one break, one date, one uh, fish. See, it's a good thing you only come Monday night for this year because we learned that the other nights we also have Mincha Maiv and we also have a class between Mincha and Maiv. I hear it at home, believe me. So we talked about that. You must be bored. No, no, no. So, number one. Now, so we discussed, there are opinions that hold, if it's a whole grape, a whole peanut, a whole nut, a whole cherry, 
you make an after brach on that. But the minig is not like that. But there is an opinion that says on one whole fruit, one cherry, one grape, one you would make the appropriate after bracha. But the din ilabrel, the minig is that no, you don't until if you eat the kazayas of it. Okay, that's as far as ikrit and tofu primarily. Now, what happens if somebody's eating cereal and milk? So like we said, the milk is there for the cereal. Right? You don't eat milk with cereal. You eat cereal and milk. So therefore, you make a brach on the cereal, whatever the appropriate brach is, and you don't make a brach on the milk. And the chiddush is that even if there's a little bit of milk left over at the end, and now you're only dr- eating or drinking the milk, you don't make a brach on that milk that you're drinking because it was covered with the bracha that you made on the cereal. That's the halacha. Now, the same thing, Let's say somebody is eating, uh, like we said, uh, macaroni and cheese. So because it's all mixed together, you make a bracha only on the mezanis, you don't make a bracha on the cheese. Or, in oven. What? Unless it was cooked in an oven. Macaroni. In an oven, you don't cook. You bake. bake. That's why I said bake. Then you change it to cook. So I'm just correcting. In halacha, you have to, can't say, I know what you mean. You have to say cook. And bake. Cook as one din, if bake as another din. There's a law, yes. Yeah. There's a long, there's a very, if it's a printed sikha from the Rebbe, it's added to the Rebbe. The Rebbe says normally the Torah says you have to speak nicely and properly. You don't say tome, you say which is not pure <laughs> and all that. I, the Torah says a lot of times the word tome. So the Rebbe says, when you're talking halacha, te, when you're talking about actual halacha, then you got to be straight. You can't say not tohar, they might hear the tohar and the not the not, the not, the not and the door. So when you're talking halacha, you got to be... Your van, you're parking so much. Which van? Van is So then... So then, uh, what's we call? Then you make a bracha. What? The problem is every time it's a different guy. <laughs> a different person. Yeah, but we called him up. Wait till <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's first time we're, we're nice. It's the first time we're nice. First time we're nice, second time, and the third time we're mean. That's the way it works. Okay, um, now, by the way, two things, even if they're cooked together, but they're served separately. You can have, well, you can have, let's say, uh, in one pan, you could be cooking a chicken and uh, rice, a chicken and potatoes in one pan. So even though they're being cooked or baked together, nevertheless, it's, it's not mixed together. It's not one food. It's two separate foods. So then the din is you make two separate brachas. You make, let's say, adoma on the potatoes and shahakol on, on the chicken. So it's only when the foods are mixed together. So then you have... Um, or if they're served together, I'll give you another example. You have a matzo ball soup. Okay? So now you get a plate. It, in the plate is a liquid chicken soup and maybe some vegetables. And then you have a matzo ball. But that was cooked together, served together, and eaten together. So then what bracha would that chicken soup be? You'd make a mezainus. Why? Because the matzo ball, the knedel as they call it, is mezainus, and that's primary. Even though there's shahakal soup and adama carrots and celery, whatever there is in the soup, but the fact is, it's being served together. Right? You're not serving the matzo ball separately and the soup separately, and you're serving it all together. So then it's a din of ikr and tofu, primary and secondary. And then you make a bracha only on the matzo ball, on the knedel, and you don't make a bracha on the soup. Do you pick the, do you pick the matzo ball when you're making the bracha? Or you when you make a bracha, you make it on, on the matzo ball. So you have to find the matzo ball. And... If you have to find it, it's not there. <laughs> a matzo ball is supposed to be 
recognizable. What happens if you like the chicken more, chicken soup more than? But mizanus is always primary. Even though you prefer to have the chicken soup more. Than yes, for the fiftieth time, there's only about making a bracha rishayna. Do you have what should I pick? Grapes or olives or this or that? Then you go by what you like better. Okay, 